Welcome back to the video series for the Play Framework using Scala. Before we leave the land of Web 1.0, I want to show you one other feature of the Play Framework. Now, this one is actually fairly specific to Play. Okay, most of the other things we've talked about, you would find an equivalent in um, pretty much any framework. But this one is a little bit different, and it is another way of handling forms. Okay, so previously, our login page we, we looked at a form for get and decided that was just a horrible idea for, for a login page, but you know, we, we put, left it in here so that you can see how that works. Then we just wrote a regular HTML form uh, that did a post request and went to our controller and we decoded it and pulled the values out of it. Okay, now this works just fine, um, but if you have a form where the input needs to be validated in certain ways. So for example, if we needed to put constraints on, on the username and the password here, we'd have to put in you know, a, a bunch of logic. And, and for example, if they were numeric values or numeric values that had to be in certain ranges, stuff like that, common example I use is, is if you're entering dates, uh, you know, those dates can be validated on the client side with, with JavaScript, but for security reasons and for the uh, stability reasons, you really have to do all of your validation on the server side. And writing that validation code can take a lot of time. So Play includes its own, uh, basically a little library for adding forms. And I wanna show you how to use that in, in this video. As I said, we're gonna do this for our login. Okay, we could create some completely separate form and some completely separate uh, you know, login capabilities, but I want to do it here with the, the code that we've already written. And as far as constraints go, what I want to do is I want to make sure that passwords and usernames are uh, a, a minimum length, and maybe for the, for the username I want to specify a maximum length as well. Okay. So what I want to do... Uh, in order to use this, A, I'm going to need to add two imports here. So I am going to import play.api.mvc.data. That's not an M. And, oh, no MVC. Just play API data. And forms dot underscore, okay, and that will give me uh, the ability to to use forms. And I'm going to make a little case class up here. Now, it, depending upon how I was doing this, it's possible this case class could move over into my model. In this case, it's just attached with this form. I'm not using it to communicate with my model, so it belongs well here. Oh, uh, we'll call it login data. And so we have a username that's a string and a password that's a string. Okay, simple enough little case class there. Now we're going to use that case class to declare uh, a one of these play forms. So I am going to declare a val. I'm going to call it the login form. And... I declare a form and I have to pass it various information about that tells it how to get information to and from um, the the form that we want and then the, the the structure of that form. I have to give it a mapping. Okay, this mapping tells it how information comes in and out of these uh, classes. So first, I need the name of a field. So for example, username. And I need to tell it the type that that is going to be. So for example, text. And then I could also say password text. And this also takes some additional arguments. So the case class, our login data, has an apply method. Now the apply method, that should be a capital L, 
And I'm missing a comma here. So the apply method, actually I believe I need, whoop, there we go. The apply method takes objects uh, or takes data and builds a login data from it. So it takes two strings and it gives us back a log login data. There is a reverse method of this called unapply. that does the opposite. Um, okay, so what I'm doing here is I create this mapping that says username is of type text and password is of type text. These are the names that they're going to be used that are going to be used on the HTML side. Okay, they don't have to match here but for obvious reasons they they probably should be close. Login, login data's apply method takes the two strings and gives you back a login data the unapply takes a login data and produces two strings from it. Okay, so what this is doing is it's just telling play how to pull information in and out and kind of how to represent it in the HTML as well. And I said one of the things I want to do is I want to specify some parameters here. And so this text doesn't have to be passed any parameters, but it can be. Okay, it can be passed a minimum length and a maximum length. So let's say I want to limit all usernames have to be at least three characters long, but should not be longer than 10 characters. And I want all passwords to be at least eight characters long. Okay, so now by putting this in here, you can see it takes the min length and the max length, and they have default values, min zero and maximum of probably a max int or something like that. Uh, so I don't have to specify them if I don't want to, but this puts constraints on there. And if the person tries to log in with shorter names, play will, or longer names, um, play will automatically kind of bounce them back. And so how do we make this work? Well, as with everything else, I need an action for it. I need something inside of my view. So we're going to add another form here and I'll need a route to get to that action. Let's start with the action. Def validate login, and I'm going to call this one form. It's an action. As always, I'm going to have this take an implicit request. And at least for the time being, let's just say, okay, so that it will compile. Now in my routes, instead of having a validate post, I'm going to make a validate form. It's still going to use the post action. And there we go. Okay, so we should have a route to this. Uh, at this point, you know, we could come over and refresh, make sure I haven't typed anything the wrong so that we don't have any compile errors. Okay, that's happy. In order for this to show up, I would need to add it to my view. Okay, so we have the validate login post, which is a login with post here. I want to make another one of these, and I want it to do the login using the form. Now, one of the things about this is I'm going to use, so up here we use this thing called a helper to build the uh, CSRF token. I'm gonna to do that same thing here. I am going to make a helper, and helper has a number of different methods in it that produce different things, different tags that you might want. So for example, a form. I want this form to have an action of the route that we want to go to. So routes dot task list one, dot validate login form. That is a route that gets us uh, to the action that we just created. And then I put a bot, uh, basically a body on this. It's technically a second argument list. That is the going to specify the contents of this form. As before, because this is a post and I want to have CSRF protection, I'll add the CSRF form field into here. 
And then I can use helpers to build my other fields. So for example, if I want, oops, sorry, not a text field, an input text, uh, from, I'm going to say, login form and username was the key that we uh, created there. Now that automatically you can hopefully when I started typing that you realize that's probably <laughs> that's probably not going to compile and the reason is I referred to this thing called a login form which we don't really have right now. Um, and let's go ahead and let's close this out. I'm just going to put a little button in here. I guess I could, yeah. So div class and and a button. that does a submit, it'll say login. Okay, <clears throat> let's go ahead and jump over here. This doesn't work because it doesn't have that login form. We'll fix that real quick and then wrap up this video and come back. So I need to pass in the login form. Okay. And this is one of those Scala forms of the case class that we created. Now, of course, that should push the error back. Okay, uh, so we first here inside of our view, we have this thing called the messages provider. Um, not going to get to that one in, in this video. Uh, second, turns out that when we call this inside of here, uh, which I'm not doing yet, I will have to make sure I pass in the the form. Okay, and our form is is up here. So that's enough content for this video. We're going to come back, we're going to finish this off, figure out what's going on with this message about not having a messages provider, and then also get it so that our controller action actually has code in it that handles the form request.